How you doing? Welcome to the Man Cave. Yep, my name is Paul Everts. I'm the CEO and founder of Band Together Leadership Seminars. We're listening to Joe Sample Carmel, one of my favorite albums when I was growing up. In fact, I grew up in Carmel, so I thought I'd share a little bit of this. Very cool. Very cool jazz right there. That's awesome. So I just want to thank you so much for joining me again tonight. I'm going to just put that on the background. And right about there. So you can reach me at my email address, which is B-A-N-D, the number two, together, band together at Comcast.net. You can also get me at my cool looking handsome website, connectingmylife.com, www.connectingmylife.com, where you can go to the curriculum tab and scroll down and you'll see all the wonderful John Maxwell material that I am certified to teach. I am a teacher, speaker, trainer, coach, ready to come help you to be a better person, and it's a win-win. When I go help you, I help me, because everything I say, I need for me as well. So please hire me. I can work with uh, any age group, particularly middle school to my age group, and not not older. So look at that curriculum. It's really good, all right? And uh, I'm ready to serve you. And if you all the way down, there's Venmo, and... um, would love to have some donations, some contributions to keep our mission going. And what is your mission? Well, I'm a high school band director and uh, I love helping people. So that's what I want to do. I want to help people. And I have uh, gotten a podcast together and now I have a YouTube channel going and I'm just giving advice uh, through John Maxwell and some other people too. I'm promoting my triangle though. I have not had it copyrighted. I don't have it licensed yet, but at least it'll, it's on uh, evidence that yes, I created the E triangle. The E triangle stands for Everts, but now as we're growing, the E triangle can stand for everyone, everybody, equally, equity. There's a lot of cool E words that you're hearing a lot of lately. So, and I, I in the, the outside of the triangle, simple, respect, responsibility, or responsible, and the bottom is self-discipline. The foundation is self-discipline, self-ownership. And then inside you have integrity, you have faith, and then you also have ethics. That's the E triangle. So just think about it. Everyone needs respect. Everyone needs to be responsible. Everyone needs to have self-discipline. Everyone. Doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what gender you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. Everyone needs integrity. Everyone needs ethics. Everyone needs faith. E-triangle. Help me with it. So again, yeah, contributions, Venmo, under the curriculum tab. And I appreciate anything you give. We are working on the book, Make Today Count. Uh, It's a little book. It's very thin. And I read parts of it. Right now we're working on attitude. This is the last part of attitude. Got to get my glasses on for you. Managing the discipline of attitude. So there you go. There's the word discipline, self-discipline. Now we have discipline of attitude. If you want to benefit from the possibilities of a positive attitude, You need to do more than just make the decision to be positive. You also have to manage that decision. For Dr. Maxwell in the area of attitude, it means one thing. Here's the one thing. Get ready. Every day I will make the adjustments necessary to keep my attitude right. That's a large goal, isn't it? Every day. Every day I will make the adjustments necessary to keep my attitude right. If this is new territory for you, you may be wondering how to do it. So here are some guidelines to help you on your way. Just a couple. Recognize that your attitude needs daily adjustment. Dr. Maxwell has discovered that a person's attitude does not naturally or easily stay positive. For example, a lifelong attitude weakness of Dr. Maxwell, his impatience with people, which is kind of funny because He's a pastor, and you would think a pastor, retired pastor. And again, I, my lessons for you can be secular and sacred. I'm ready to give the same information that meets your need. So 
it's interesting that he's impatient with people. It was a problem even back when he was young. In school, when the teacher set aside a day to review before the final exam, Dr. Maxwell got dirty looks when he asked, If we got it the first time, do we still have to come for the review? And he still fights impatience. Every day he asks himself, Have I been impatient with someone? When he has, he apologizes to the person. He has had to do that more times than he liked to admit. Like any discipline, your attitude will not take care of itself. That is why it needs to be attended to daily. Number two, managing the discipline attitudes. Find something positive in everything. Not long ago, Dr. Maxwell came across a prayer that he thought was wonderful. And here's what the prayer said. Dear Lord, so far today, I'm doing all right. I have not gossiped, not lost my temper, been greedy, I'm grumpy, nasty, selfish, or self adults Excuse me. I have not whined, I'm not cursed, or eaten any chocolate. However, I am going to get out of bed in a few minutes, and I will need a lot more help after that. Amen. It may not always be easy, but if you try hard enough, you can find something good, even in the midst of difficult situations. In Laugh Again, Dr. Maxwell's friend Chuck Swindoll explains that when Mother Teresa was asked the requirements for people assisting in her work with the destitute in Calcutta, Mother Teresa cited two things. Number one, the desire to work hard, and number two, a joyful attitude. If someone could be expected to be joyful among the dying and the poorest of the poor, then certainly we can do the same in our situation. Number three, find someone positive in every situation. Nothing helps a person more to remain positive like having an ally. The world is filled with negative people. In fact, they often flock together. But positive people are everywhere. You will often find them soaring above the negative people, just like eagles. When you do, seek them out. If you're having a hard time, Get close and draft behind them the way racers do. If they're having difficulty, you be the one to go out front and make things easier. Two positive people are much better at fighting off the blues than someone going it alone. Two more. Say something positive in every conversation. Dr. Maxwell has tried to make it a habit to include positive comments in every conversation with others. It starts with those closest to him. When his wife looks beautiful, which he says is often, exclamation point, he tells her. He compliments his children every time he sees them. And Dr. Maxwell absolutely pours out praise every time he sees his grandchildren. But he doesn't stop there. He sincerely compliments, praises, acknowledges, bolsters, raises up, and rewards people whenever he can. It is wonderful for him as well as for others. And he highly recommends it. Another one. Remove negative words from your vocabulary. Dr. Maxwell's father retired in his mid-70s and he recently passed away. So God rest him. God rest his soul. He's a good man. But he has spent his entire life in public speaking. He came from a modest background. So he was always working hard to learn and grow. When Dr. Maxwell was a kid, he used to play with his brother Larry and me 10 cents, oh, he used to pay, excuse me, pay his brother Larry and him 10 cents for every grammatical mistake we found him making when he was preaching. It was just one example of how his father was constantly trying to improve himself. You can do the similar thing when it comes to your attitude. You or someone you enlist can be looking out for the negative words in your vocabulary. Eliminate these words such as I can't, if only, I don't think. And say these instead. I can, I will, I know. Know is better than think. And now here's the last one. Missed it by one. Express gratitude others daily. And this is the one I wanted to get to because next week is Thanksgiving. Express gratitude to others daily. Of all the virtues, gratitude seems to be the least expressed. 
How often do people go out of their way to thank you? How often do you receive a thank you note when you give a gift? More important, how often do you extend your thanks to others? In our culture of plenty, we tend to take things for granted. A few years ago, Oprah Winfrey encouraged her millions of TV viewers to keep a gratitude journal to help them appreciate life. Amy Vanderbilt, journalist and etiquette author, said, quote, when we learn to give thanks, we are learning to concentrate not on the bad things, but on the good things in our lives, unquote. Thinking about the good things helps us to be grateful. Remaining grateful helps us to have a more positive attitude. And having a positive attitude prompts us to think about the good rather than the bad. It's a positive cycle that helps to fuel itself. And so here are your attitude decision today. Where do you stand when it comes to your attitude today? Ask yourself just these three questions. Number one. Have you already made the decision to choose and display the right attitude daily, every day? Number two, if so, when did you make that decision? Number three, what exactly did you decide? So your attitude discipline every day. Based on the decision you made concerning attitude, What is the one discipline you must practice today and every day in order to be successful? Attitude is a choice. Attitude is so hard. People see your attitude. People, you know, when you've got a grumpy face on, people know. People can hear your attitude. They can even smell your attitude, man. When you stink, literally stink, that's just a bad attitude right there. Uh, I don't know about touch, feel, maybe the way you handshake, if we get to handshake anymore in this COVID time, correct? So here's my thing for you with the attitude. We have choices. My attitude stinks at times. And I have to catch myself and I have to make that choice to say, hey dude, you are not in a good space right now. Therefore, other people are gonna feel it. I am not perfect. So when I do these things to you, sometimes people go, um, you like the, the sound of your own voice. No, I don't like the sound of my own voice. My voice sucks. If I kept smoking cigars, my voice would probably be really good. I have good set of pipes. No, my voice, I don't like my voice. So I don't like the sound of my voice. No. I bought this book for me because I needed it. I share it with you because I know you need it. Yes, you do need it. Check your attitude. See how your attitude is impacting other people's lives around you. Because in the end, you're going to have to begin with the end in mind. Every choice you make is who you are. It's true. Your choices are you. What do you want those choices to say about you? Seek first to understand and then be understood. People are hurting. Ask them, how are you doing today? And then flip and listen to them. Would you please authentically listen to them? And then people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I care about you a lot. That's why I make these videos for you and me. And then say with me three times, I am doing the best I can. I am doing the best I can. And then finally, one more time, I am doing the best I can. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make a a, a video before uh, Thanksgiving, so I probably won't. Um, So I apologize. Next video will be two weeks from today. Be, I think, December the 2nd. December already. Therefore, I hope you have a really, really great Thanksgiving. And I don't want to talk about that too much. Have Thanksgiving. You don't know if you're going to have one next year. You don't know if your relatives are going to be there next year. If everyone checks out to be safe, go have Thanksgiving with your family. Gosh darn it, man. You know, please. You only get one Thanksgiving 2020, and this has been a crappy year. There's my attitude. Have a blessed Thanksgiving. Make sure you do all you can to have one. And if not... Make make it just another great outstanding day. Make the day count. Okay, everybody, I'm babbling. I gotta go. I love you. Bye.